welcome to the fourth video in the Cinderella ball gown construction series. In this video, I will be showing you how to make the petticoat. This petticoat took me four months to complete because it requires a lot of fabric and a lot of patience and a lot of material. So yes, it took me four months to sew this. And now that it is finally completed, I'm hoping that my videos on YouTube will be a bit more consistent because they probably shouldn't take as long as this project did. But anyway, without any more bother, let me show you how I made the petticoat. For this project, you're going to need to know how to make three things. Godets, ruffles, and flounces. And ruffles and flounces are very similar, but they're also very different. So I'm gonna insert a clip showing you, um, just explaining briefly the difference between ruffles and flounces. So when I'm doing my frills, I just take a long rectangle of fabric and sew a straight stitch, and when I pull this thread, it will gather the fabric to make these frills. And when I do my flounces, I have this unique kind of seashell looking pattern, and my flounces are six inches, so basically when I drafted this pattern, I just made this six inches, and then I traced it around, building it up each time until it became about as, uh, until the circumference was about to the width of my fabric. And then when you lie this flat, it should give you this beautiful, wavy, flouncy look that's all curly. And you can't just get this just by cutting it. You also need to sew some fishing line into, into that, but we will, I will get into that later. Now that that is all sorted out, I am going to show you how to make these things. First, we're starting with ruffles. I have four multicolored ruffles on this petticoat and two white ruffles which are attached to the crinoline as a dust ruffle. All of my frills and flounces for the petticoat are six inches wide and to make the frills, cut six inch wide rectangles out of your fabric of choice. Finish all the edges with a serger or a zigzag stitch. I used a serger for to do the top edge and a zigzag on the bottom because it was tighter and less noticeable. Three, join the sides of the rectangles together to create a really long ungathered strip. For the multicolored frills, I arranged the order of my colors in an ombre. Four, run a gathering stitch along the whole thing. My stitch length was at four so that I could easily pull the thread. Step five, gather by pulling the thread, and step six, attach the ruffle to the skirt. I drafted a flounce pattern in a spiral six inch wide strip continuing outward until it was, until the whole thing was 30 inches wide so I could cut two out of one yard of fabric. Step two, cut out your flounces. Step three, finish the top and side edges with a zigzag stitch. And I find that a zigzag is way easier to do because, um, it's kind of hard to get those curved edges through a serger. Step four, get your fishing line. I am using a 50 pound fishing line because it's thicker and will make my flounces nice and crisp. Prepare the fishing line by winding it around a wooden dowel. I believe my wooden dowel was, I think it's a one inch diameter, but I am not exactly sure. This winding process makes the flounces very crisp and curly and take care not to carelessly overlap the fishing line. To set the curls, use the steam of your iron and get it to gently warm up the spool. You'll know that it's hot enough when you can pull the iron away and the fishing line is just a little more, a little more than warm to the touch. Step five, zigzag your fishing line into the hem of the flounce. Step six, gather the flounce much like a frill and attach to the godets. Next, we are going to learn how to make godets. And I should probably briefly explain what godets are because many people I have talked to don't know what they are. So godets are like triangle pieces of skirt that you cut out and they are cut in this triangle shape to give more volume to the bottom while reducing the bulk at the top of the skirt. The godets in this petticoat all have flounces attached to them. To make godets, measure the spot from the top of the godet to the floor. Using pattern or wrapping paper, use a string to mark out a 90 degree triangle with side lengths for your measurement. Next, cut out however many you need. I'm pretty bad at math, so I just placed my pattern around the skirt to find out how many I needed. Next, you're going to finish the edges again with a serger or a zigzag. Next, sew together your godets. 
There will be a small gap at the top, so pin the godets to the petticoat to figure out how big that gap will be. Next, attach the flounces, and then after your flounces have been attached, sew the godets to the petticoat. This will get progressively harder to wrestle under the machine as you add more layers. The last layer of godets on my petticoat, what should have taken just a few minutes to stitch down to the petticoat, took me several, like, it took me half an hour just to wrestle that thing around my machine. So once again, this project requires a lot of patience. Now that you know how to make those three things, I am going to show you a picture of each layer of the petticoat so that you can see how I arranged these layers. The first layer is the crinoline, and I used two yards of white organza to make the dust ruffle, which is detachable by means of snaps. There is a frill both inside and outside the crinoline. And you may notice that uh, there are, well actually I think in this photo there's only one hula hoop, but I later added two, and I sewed two hula hoops into my crinoline for extra strength because um, just the double boning was not enough to support the weight of the petticoat, so I had to add two hula hoops. And this may seem a little weird, but um, if you just go to the dollar store and pick up a hula hoops, they're actually very, very strong and can really help to support the petticoat. And I believe the bottom one had to be about 40 inches in diameter, but I'm not exactly sure. And all you have to do is just untape the hula hoops, open them up, dump out the rocks, and then insert them through a boning channel and stitch them in. And that's literally all I had to do, and it worked such wonders to support this huge petticoat. White base layer. This took six yards of white organza, and I created a paneled skirt by measuring my hoops on the crinoline and dividing the circumference by number of panels, which was about eight to nine, to find out how wide each panel would be. To add more strength, I double layered the skirt and used felled seams. Next is two multicolored frills, and here's how much fabric I used. I only gathered half of this fabric, and I used the other half for frills on a different layer. Now we have a layer of small godets with flounces. These godets were 10 inches long, and there were 24 of them. And I should just probably say that you probably can't use my measurements for everything because this, um, the measures for the godets will depend on how tall you are, and I am about 5'6", if that helps. The fifth layer is some medium-sized godets, and these were iridescent and have flounces as well. And these were 15 inches, and I cut 19 of them. Layer six is the final layer of godets for the first layer of the petticoat. These were aqua with royal blue flounces, and the godets were 22 inches, and I cut 11 of them. I kind of cheated on this layer because I didn't want to cut out several panels and have a ton of pieces lying around, so I cut out a circle skirt, and I surged the seams of the panels into this circle skirt. So it looks like a paneled skirt, but it's actually not. This is also double layered, and it has eight panels. Next is another multicolored frill made from the leftover fabric from before. Layer nine is the same small godets from before, but because the skirt is bigger, I had to cut 34 of these godets to fit around the entire skirt, and these godets were aqua. This is when I started double layering the flounces, so from now on I will be gathering two layers of flounces for each godet are the medium godets that I cut, and I cut out 20 of them. The godets are 31 inches and are aqua colored, and these godets are also double layered for strength, so I cut out 16 and when doubled up I had 8 of them, which is one for each panel, and the seams on the panels really help you line up the godets. The last layer of godets are these very large double layered baby blue godets, and they are 45 inches long and have and I have four of them, so each godet center should line up with a panel seam. This layer is three full circle skirts, each a different color, so when I layered them, they created a watercolor effect. The colors in order are baby blue, purple, and aqua. 14. This is all finished with a multicolored frill and I cut one yard from each fabric, not including the white fabric or the iridescent fabric. And even with just one yard of each fabric, I still had lots of leftovers, and you actually wanna save the leftover fabric from this project because you can use the scraps to make butterflies for the bodice, which I will explain when we get to the bodice video. Okay, so I've got all my layers, and 
Well, I've got the entire petticoat completed. The only thing I need to do is add a waistband. Now, there are several challenges that come with adding this waistband, and the first one was trying to get this thing underneath the sewing machine. It like I had to do a stay stitch just around this entire thing, and it is not easy. <laughs> it like what what should usually take you about a couple minutes took me like. 20 minutes just to get this around because it's so big so it might help if you maybe put your sewing machine on the floor when you do this so that you can so that the fabric is easier to move around and um yes um so this waistband I'm probably gonna try doing it in pieces because I want to be able to make this strong but I don't want to use the sewing machine as much as possible because it is really hard to move around so I think what I'm gonna do is this is pardon the very ugly stitching but um, this is gonna be covered with some binding and then there's gonna be like a little uh, like a modesty panel flap because um, that this fits but I want to I need to add that I forgot what it was called you know the little back thing that goes so that this can overlap and then so I'm going to do just this part. This is the this is the um, seam I cut into the dress so that I can get it on and off. I'm doing this separately from the waistband just so that it can be easier to piece together. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if this makes sense, but I'll take some pictures so that I can show you. All right, quick update. So I have finished part of the waistband. So I've done this... Uh, the spot where I'm going to put closures along the petticoat. Ooh, petticoat. And I have, what I've done is I've taken two pieces of cotton. Both are, I think, four inches by eight inches. I've surged the ends and um, ironed on some interfacing. And this first one I have attached to the back and then folded it around and sewed it down here and then I have this one which I first sewed it um, to make a seam and then I folded it back and stitched it down so that this can overlap and this will be the closure of the petticoat. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, sew on a piece of fabric just around here so that we can finish up this edge and make it look all nice and neat. All right, I finished the waistband. Well, I actually finished the waistband days ago, but then I just forgot to film this little bit here, so that's what I'm doing. So I attached this top bit as you would with a normal waistband by like um, sewing it like this and then flipping it over and then stitching it down here. And then I sewed on my hook and eyes. There's two hook and eyes up here, and then on the fabric down here, I have some hooks and bars. I don't know. You can see hold on and let's see I think there's four hooks and bars one two three four and then there's two hooks and eyes at the very top I think this gap here measures at about five to eight inches it really depends you'll probably just have to measure yourself because everyone is different with all of that done the petticoat is finally finished <laughs>
I really hope you enjoyed and I really hope you found this helpful. If you would like to participate in choosing my projects for the rest of this year, I still have the, um, the survey open and there should be a link for that down below. Um, I'm really excited and I've already purchased the materials to do my Emma dress, so I'm really, really excited to get that one started. We will be making the outer skirt of the Cinderella dress, then after that we will be making the bodice, and then after that there will be a video for accessories, and then after that there will be a full project reveal which I am super super excited about. So, thank you for watching, and I really enjoy all of your support. If you have any questions or comments you can leave those down below, and I hope you have a very wonderful day. I gotta sneeze. Hold on. That's just the worst. <laughs> Hold on. It's coming back. It's coming back. I can't take it anymore. Ugh, it doesn't decide whether it wants to sneeze or not. Now, I'm not sure whether I made a dress or a tent because it's quite roomy in here. As you can see. And, um, it's actually quite nice to be surrounded by all these shades of blue and purple because it reminds me of the ocean and it's very calming. <laughs> this reminds me of when I was a little girl and I was in ballet and we did the Nutcracker and I was one of the little, um, children under Mother Ginger's dress and this yeah this reminds me of that except none of my friends are with me you know I wonder what happened to them because like after a long time I never got to see my friends again so I wonder where they are now well if if you're out there and you used to be in my ballet class and we did the Nutcracker together this is where I am now I'm under a dress <laughs> <laughs> These layers can get pretty intense. Send help, please.